This man's name is King the Avid Gambler. Even though he was an amateur, he always managed to win thanks to his cunning tricks. Apart from his gambling addiction, he often went with paid girls even though he was already married. That day as usual, before going to the casino, King took his time to stop by his mistress's place. He had been doing this for the past few months. That day, just as he was about to leave to gamble, his wife, Fanny, suddenly appeared in front of him. Wanted to tell him something important, but she lost her words when she saw her husband cheated on her. Without saying much, Fanny immediately left. King chased her, but Fanny had long gone. Soon after, her driver, Chung, came to take him to the casino. During a trip, Chung told King that he had put a hidden camera in the casino. Apart from that, Chung also told him that Fanny was pregnant, but instead of being enthusiastic about the news, King changed the topic of conversation by talking about his dream of wanting to play with a very famous gambler in the country named Maka. He was sure that one day he could beat him. King arrived at the casino to play against someone called Bad Temper. Without Bad Temper realizing it, there was a hidden camera behind his desk to monitor his cards so that King could know what cards he had via a small speaker attached to King's glasses. As the game progressed, King got a call from Fanny, in which she said that she wanted a divorce and was now pregnant with his child. Instead of persuading her to change her mind, King ignored it and continued playing until finally won the game. Bad Temper, who couldn't accept that he had lost, immediately splashed the girl next to him and King's glasses got wet. King then took off his glasses, but unfortunately, his friend's voice of joy could be heard by Bad Temper, who then attacked King out of anger. During the fight, King managed to end Bad Temper's life. King was taken to the hospital and was woken up confused with all black and white. Turned out he suffered from color blindness because of the fight. Apart from that, King also had to experience the bitter reality that he had to be responsible for Bad Temper's death. He had to spend five years in prison and since then, he never heard from Fanny again. He was only visited by Chung twice. To spend his free time in prison, King learned a lot of things such as learning about computers and predicting opportunities. There were so many cheaters in the world so he felt that cheating was necessary to win anything. In another place, a man named Dragon had just lost a lot from gambling. He was so scared when a policeman named Eastwood approached him, knowing he would be interrogated about his boss, Leanne. However, because he didn't want to betray his boss, he kept avoiding Eastwood's calls. As punishment, Eastwood embarrassed him in the middle of the crowd. Soon after, Dragon met Liang who told him to pick up his brother, King, who would be out of prison because he couldn't do it. Before leaving, Liang gave him $300,000 but Dragon was disappointed because the amount of money was too small. The next day, Dragon went to pick up King in prison. When he saw King, he immediately introduced himself. King then went to a public telephone to call Fanny, but there was no answer. Dragon said that Fanny might have changed her number. He then suggested they go to a public bath because it was cold outside. While relaxing, Dragon asked King to teach him to gamble, but King refused because he didn't want Dragon to be his opponent in the future. Dragon then offered himself to be King's assistant. Unfortunately, King didn't immediately accept the offer. After bathing, they went to eat together. That was when King noticed Dragon's sincerity and trustworthiness, so he decided to accept Dragon's offer. Dragon was excited when he heard that. Dragon then took King to a karaoke place where his sister, Ching, worked. When Dragon went to the toilet, Ching asked King about Dragon and King said that Dragon was in the toilet. Ching then asked him to tell Dragon that she wouldn't pay for Dragon's karaoke bill anymore. Knowing that Ching was Dragon's sister, King asked her to join but Ching refused because she was still working. Ching went back to work and found that a customer named Rocky was harassing her friend and without hesitation, immediately helped her. Rocky was stunned by Ching's beauty and wanted to have her for that night. Ching bravely challenged him to a game, putting herself at stake. But if Rocky lost, he had to go. Rocky agreed with this. Ching's boss panicked when she heard that knowing that Rocky was known to be rude to women. She immediately sought help and met Dragon outside. He then told this to Dragon. Dragon, who saw King, immediately explained the situation and asked for his help to save his sister. Shortly after, Ching lost the bet and locked herself in the toilet. Rocky continued to knock on the door until King came in and immediately stopped him and invited him to bet on a pool game saying that he would let him bring Ching with him and $30,000 if he won. But if he lost, he had to pay him the same amount and then left. W wasn't thinking straight when saying that he unexpectedly managed to win the game. After paying for the bet, Rocky left there. Dragon immediately told Ching to get out of the toilet because the situation was safe. Since he had no place to crash that night, King decided to stay at Ching's house. Ching warned him not to mess with her because she had a fiancé who was studying in America. Hearing that, King said that he also had a wife who he loved very much. King suggested that Dragon should stay with them to prevent anything bad and Ching agreed. Soon after, King taught Dragon how to gamble. Dragon enthusiastically paid attention to every step that King taught. King then called but not to the betting place but to the restaurant. 
Hearing that, Dragon was disappointed because King didn't want to bet because he was afraid of losing but King said that he would start gambling until next week so Dragon let him be. He then felt the hunger coming and decided to crash into someone's wedding party pretending to be a guest. They thought that all the food was free, but when Dragon asked for more drink, the waiter gave him the bill. Dragon complained and didn't accept it, but King told him to just pay immediately so as not to make a commotion and attract attention. While they were feasting, there was a commotion from the table next to them. King asked what happened and Dragon explained that they were busy gambling, and then explained how to play. Soon after, King invited him to leave, afraid of being caught by the host of the event because they pretended to be guests. When they were walking to the exit, Eastwood who was there immediately called Dragon and asked him to play with him. And because Dragon felt he had lost $140 to pay for the food, he joined in to get some money back but unfortunately, he lost 10000 King knew that Eastwood was cheating and stopped Dragon from betting more of his money, knowing he would only lose more. Knowing Eastwood was cheating, Dragon asked King for help to defeat Eastwood and without hesitation, gave King all the money he had. King decided to help and bet all the money. With that much to bet, King asked to choose his own card, and after betting that much, Eastwood agreed. King chose the card and won the game easily, shocking Eastwood. King casually said that the deceptive tricks were too easy to guess. Eastwood was angry but couldn't do anything because they were in a public place. He then went to the toilet and ordered his men to finish off King, but King found out about it and instead went to the toilet to confront Eastwood. Thanks to King's victory, they had a lot of money to spend at the carry of the place. Ching came and King asked her to join, but Ching had to take care of another customer named Maka. Hearing that, King decided to look for him. After a long time, he could finally meet Maka, his idol. The next day, King and Dragon watched a horse race. King used his skills to analyze the horses that would win and he decided to bet on horse number 5, which then became a winner. Amid their happiness, Xing went home with her boyfriend, Raymond, who she immediately introduced. Dragon was annoyed to see him and decided to leave. Meanwhile, King watched Raymond's movements while asking him questions as he felt suspicious of him. When King asked Raymond's mail address to make it easier for Ching to contact him, he refused to give it, and that added to his suspicion. He then told Dragon about Raymond who claimed to be a student from America. When he heard this, Dragon became suspicious and felt that Raymond had lied to his sister. They then decided to call the campus where Raymond was studying and found out that Raymond wasn't even a student there. After finding out that Raymond was a liar, Dragon accidentally saw Raymond dating a sugar mommy named Angela. Because of that incident, Dragon decided to follow him. A few moments later on the way home, Raymond accidentally bumped into a man who without him knowing, had stolen his wallet and given it to Dragon. Dragon immediately looked for Angela's number in the wallet to trap her. On the other hand, Raymond went with Ching to a restaurant. Suddenly, Rocky came to tease Ching. Ching felt uncomfortable and asked Raymond to leave from there. When they were about to leave, Angela appeared and made the situation chaotic. Ching was angry when she found out that Raymond was cheating. The situation started to heat up when King and Dragon came. Then revealed all of Raymond's lies. Raymond was angered and put up a fight. He accidentally stabbed King and escaped in a panic. Ching panicked to see that but Dragon revealed that it was all just a prank they did on purpose to teach Raymond a lesson to stop his bad behavior. A few days later, Rocky met King and asked him to help him gamble at Makah's gambling house because he often lost there. King initially refused, but when Dragon suggested that he could use his winnings to find the whereabouts of Fanny and his child, King finally agreed. That night, they went to Makah's gambling house. There, Rocky met his old friend Han, whom he introduced to King, but when Han heard King's name, he got annoyed as he remembered his brother's killer. It turned out that Han was Bad Temper's brother. Han then excused himself and left. A few moments later, they enter the gambling room and start the game. Rocky almost lost but King managed to prevent this and gave Rocky the steps he should take and sure enough, Rocky won the game. King continued his game while watching Rocky watched it in excitement. After that, Rocky dispersed his winning worth of $4 million and invited King and Dragon to celebrate but seeing Han there, King wanted to avoid him and went to the toilet. On his way, King ran into an employee whose face felt very familiar. He tried to chase him and found out that it was Chung. King asked him about the whereabouts of Fanny and his child so Chung explained the bitter truth that after Fanny heard the news that King had gone to prison, she decided to end her life. King immediately felt very sad and regretful. Chung apologized for failing to look after Fanny, but King couldn't blame him because it wasn't his fault. Meanwhile, without them realizing it, someone was watching them from afar. After that, King went back inside to meet Dragon and Rocky, but he accidentally met Han. Han offered to work with him, but King refused. Hearing that, Han respected King's decision and said that he would invite him to do business another time. The next day, Chum went home and was welcomed by his wife, who turned out to be Fanny. Chum told Fanny that he met King and he lied about her death. 
He was afraid that King would find out about his lie and Fanning tried to calm Chung. But it turned out that King was following Chung and managed to catch him lying. Both were shocked to see King. Dragon was about to hit Chung if not because of King who stopped him. Dragon felt that his presence was disturbing, so he finally left. King expressed his disappointment with Chung for betraying him. Fanning defended Chung, stating that she couldn't wait for King in prison, especially without money. Even though it hurt, King understood this and left. King immediately went to meet Dragon outside and saw a boy with him. When the boy introduced himself as Little King, King realized that the boy was the child he had been looking for. He was his son. King hugged him tightly and he went back to meet Chung and Fanny to ask for their permission to take Little King to play another day and they allowed it. The next day, King took Lil King, Dragon and Ching to an amusement park. King looked very happy to be able to spend time with his son but Ching was sad because she remembered Raymond. Seeing that, King approached Ching and tried to comfort her. He suggested she take a vacation to heal her wound so Ching said that she wanted to go to Europe. Hearing that, King said that he would accompany her. Not long after, Ham came and invited King to work with him again. But King again refused the offer. Furious with King's refusal, Ham showed a recording of Fanny being raped by his men. When he saw this, King immediately hit him. Ching wanted to help but she was held by King's men. King and Ching had gone for quite a while so Dragon invited Little King to look for them. When Ching saw them from afar, she immediately told them to leave. Hearing that, Little King immediately ran, but unfortunately, he fell from the stairs. That night, King returned home and pondered his problem. Ching came in and saw him. King then shared how sad he was because he had lost his family, time, happiness, and self-confidence. Hearing that, Ching cheered him and said that he was a great man who was able to overcome all of his problems. Carried away by the atmosphere, Ching expressed her feelings to King and King turned out feeling the same. That night, they decided to become lovers. The next day, King decided to work together with Han. Dragon expressed his disagreement, but King still chose to work with Han to free Fanny. Not long after, King was picked up by Han. King asked Han to explain his plan because otherwise, he wouldn't help him. Han explained his cunning plan to finish Maka. However, he hadn't found a way to do it, so King suggested a plan. After that, Dragon invited King to meet with a reliable director who could record and fake live broadcasts named Squirrel. They decided to pay him to fake the upcoming football match between Brazil and France to trick Macau. King wanted the broadcast as convincing as possible and Squirrel agreed to help. That night, King prepared to go to the gambling place. He said goodbye to Ching and told her to meet him at the station the next day because if he won, he would immediately take her to Europe. Ching was afraid that King might never come, but King assured her that tomorrow he would come. Without them realizing it, Dragon actually heard their conversation. This made King feel embarrassed. When they arrived at Makao's place, King went to the VIP room where they met Makao. While waiting for the other players, King invited Makao and Han to bet on the match between Brazil and France. King said that if Brazil managed to score a goal, Makao had to pay $25 million. Makao agreed, feeling confident his guess was right. Soon, another player named Gary came. He made fun of King and said that he was a coward. Hearing that, Dragon felt angry and made fun of Gary directly, but King felt annoyed with Dragon and told him to just leave. Turned out it was a signal for Dragon to set up the ship's antenna and connect it to Squirrel's antenna. After that, he returned to meet King in the VIP room. King had started his first game successfully. He was able to win it easily. Macau praised his great abilities. Dragon returned and praised him for his victory too. But Gary arrogantly refused to acknowledge King's victory, while saying that it was just a coincidence. That single comment succeeded in making Dragon angry and attacked him. Seeing what Dragon did to Gary, Gary's bodyguards quickly stopped him. Han kicked Dragon until he fell. As a result of this incident, Dragon was chased out of the room. Dragon was brought into a room where Eastwood tied Fanny and Chung. Eastwood hit him badly, and after that, dragged Fanny with him. Dragon managed to free himself with a razor that he hid in his mouth and surprise attacked Eastwood. He then immediately freed Fanny and Chung and then ran away together to Squirrel's place. Dragon immediately met Squirrel and told him to start the fake broadcast. Dragon changed his appearance and disguised himself as a Brazilian footballer, Ronaldo, and scored a goal for Brazil. Gary began to become suspicious of Ronaldo's different appearance, but Kim diverted his attention by saying that Gary's card had fallen. This made Gary lose focus. Not long after that, Dragon was ordered to cover his face with the clothes he was wearing. As a result of this action, Dragon hit the goalpost and fainted. This caused concern for his team, but Dragon managed to regain consciousness. He returned to playing his role and even managed to score for the second time to equalize the score between Brazil and France. This incident made Macaw feel short of breath and anxious because his prediction was wrong. Han, who saw the situation, asked the bodyguards to give Macaw a glass of water, but Macaw refused to drink it. 
Ham was worried to see this, afraid that his plan would fail. In the last round, King managed to win two games and Macau had to lose, when he realized that Macau fell helplessly from his chair. Ham was shocked and checked Macau's condition. Knowing that Macau had died, his worry suddenly changed to joy because his plan had succeeded. He immediately pointed a gun at King, revealing that he was dead mad and wanted to avenge his brother's death. Suddenly, Macau, who had previously pretended to be dead, stood and pointed his gun back at Han. He tricked Han because it turned out that he had known about his betrayal from the start. He cold-bloodedly covered Han's head with a cloth and then shot him dead. This made King shocked. Elsewhere, Ching went to the station according to King's directions with a heart full of worry. Suddenly, King appeared in front of her. King's arrival immediately made Ching happy, but her joy was gone when King was suddenly hit by a car. Amid her panic, driving got out of the car and approached Ching, saying it was just another prank. Ching was annoyed but happy to see them made it unharmed.